So we're going to focus on, first of all, a little bit of frontal concavity, then temporal hollows. And actually, this, in her case, is actually one aesthetic unit instead of two individual uh, indications. So we could also treat it as one if we remain either subcutaneous or go from deeper than the subcutaneous tissue, let's say subfascial in the temporal area and then subfascial in the frontal area. All right, so I'm going to mark the area that we want to treat. So first of all, frontal concavity over here, then moving down along the lateral orbital rim to the zygomatic arch. So this is basically the area that we want to treat. So I could take a 50 millimeter cannula and start working from here, moving my way up and doing fanning in this area. Anesthesia, I will start from this entry point. This will be just on the top of the zygomatic arch, one, two, three. The second anesthesia point is where the lateral orbital rim meets the zygomatic arch. So from there, I move my needle just past the orbital rim, go behind the orbital rim, aspirate, and inject about 0.5 mL of lidocaine in order to anesthetize the temporal area. I can do the same for the frontal area. There is, of course, the supraorbital foramen. And I can go with my needle straight down to the periosteum there. With a little bleb, lidocaine, at the periosteal area. Feeling the liquid pressing against my finger so I know that the liquid will enter into that um, supraorbital nerve. So I will make an entry point right over here. And then I will take diluted radius. I'm going to introduce the cannula to the subcutaneous tissue. But of course, you know, the superficial temporal artery and the veins are in this level. So ideally, go one level below that and then advance the cannula in the, let's say, underneath the temporal parietal fascia. And then that's relatively a safe zone. And now I'm filling up the temporal area with diluted radius. patient will hear some kind of a cracking noise, crackling noise, because of the cannula passing subcutaneous fibrous septae. And now I want to enter into the frontal concavity. So I advance my cannula through temporal parietal fascia, lift up the um, frontalis muscle, and then direct my cannula underneath the frontalis muscle. All over here, advance the cannula a bit further, okay, and then evening it out with my fingers. I still move the product a bit medially. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, I'm just gonna keep my finger here just a moment in case I've created a bruise. 
Okay. Okay. All right. So again, facing small deposits in the frontal concavity from this relatively far entry point. Okay. It's also possible to go just underneath the brow in order to give a slight elevation of the lateral brow. You can do that either subcutaneously or submuscularly. In this case, I do both in order to have nice and homogeneous distribution of my calcium hydroxyl appetite. It will have a nice lifting effect because we are pushing also the hairline laterally. And as you can understand, if you push it laterally, it can have a lifting effect on the cheek. So everything we do up here will have an effect on the upper and the lower cheek or on the mandibular line. Great. So a normal um, side effect is that you see temporary distension of the veins here in the temporal area. Um, because of the increased pressure, there's a little bit of an uh, outflow obstruction causing the blood vessels to actually dilate. There is adrenaline in the lidocaine that we used, so you can also see a blanching effect after a while. Not visible yet in this case. So we're going to move to the other side. There is some swelling now, which is normal after calcium hydroxyl appetite injection. But of course, there's also some lidocaine. So if we ask the patient to raise her brows, raise your brows, you see that this part of the frontalis is now blocked because of the lidocaine effect. <laughs> 